apparently this is actually quite a large problem. I've heard from fire crews on the ground who have been stopped by what are effectively armed militias manning roadblocks in Oregon. So um, it, it, it's, a, it's a real problem. I think that people believe that, that there are, you know, roving bands of, of protesters starting fires. It, you know, it, it's interesting. This happens in California too. Back when we had the big lightning event, there, I, I started getting lots of emails uh, from folks who insisted that there was some sort of conspiracy about the lightning. I got folks in the East Coast who said that the lightning didn't even happen. I said, well, tell that to the 5 million people who observed these 10,000 lightning strikes occur in the middle of the night. But, you know, theories ranging from direct energy weapons, somebody emailed me a theory about a, a man with telekinesis and a box of matches. So it's, in a lot, a lot of cases, it's, you know, there, there's these theories that circulate. And in some, in some ways, the, the, the most obvious logical solution is that, is that there was a big thunderstorm and it was dry and the lightning sparked the fires. Or in the more recent instance, when there wasn't lightning, that there were 60 or 70 mile an hour winds, which knocked power lines over or knocked trees into power lines and sparked a bunch of fires. There were, you know... My, my favorite part is when folks say, why, why, why were all these fires starting when the conditions were so extreme? It seems a little suspicious that dozens of fires ignited when the wildfire conditions were, were at the top level of the chart. I said, well, that's exactly how this works. You get more fires when the conditions are favorable for more fires. That, that is actually entirely what you would expect to see. So it's, you know, it's, 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 an, it's, it's a culturally interesting phenomenon, phenomenon but it's not... Uh, particularly reassuring.